Hey, everybody. Welcome to Social Beauty Makers, a weekly podcast featuring fast-paced 15-minute conversations with industry masterminds, plus a weekly bonus episode on trends in tech and media for salons. I'm Gordon Miller, founder of Social Beauty Makers and your podcast host. And today's mastermind guest is marketing and social slash digital media thought leader, fellow podcaster, one of the best coaches I know in the entire professional beauty industry, Passion Squared's CEO, Nina Kovner. Hey, bestie. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'd love to dig more into that, but we're here just for 15 minutes. And, you know, you and I could do the <laughs> intro. We could spend 15 minutes on the introduction if we're not careful. So, right. so, and we're here to talk the very big idea. In fact, the very, very big and too often misunderstood idea of brands and branding. I'll use both those words. Um, yeah, let, let's get started. Well, brand and branding, they, they are used, what's that word? Like interchangeably. Thank you. <laughs> Interchangeably. Yet they are two very different things. And typically when people are talking about branding, they move straight to aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. Brand identity, yep. the look, logo. the feel, the logo, the font. When someone's like, I just launched my new brand and it's a logo. Look, that's yep. not yep. your new brand. That is your brand identity. That's your logo. That's very important. However, a brand is something very different. You either have a personal brand or a business brand. Really important to differentiate uh, social beauty makers, Passion Squared. Those are business brands, right? But Gordon Miller or Nina Kovner would be, would be personal brands. That's really important to differentiate. Brand identity or branding is not the brand story. Its purpose, however, is to help tell the story. So when you're designing your brand, you are starting with the fundamentals, which I'll dive into in a second. Once you have those fundamentals in place, then you begin your branding or brand identity, your imagery, your graphics, your fonts, colors, logos, voice, and all of that. So the, the simplest way I know to explain this is a business sells a product or service and a brand creates an experience an identity that inspires folks to choose, right? A brand creates an emotional connection and is focused on building long-term relationships for those they're designed to serve. I want to talk for a moment, just kind of perspective from, from the point of view of the person on the outside looking in, and then, then the opposite, kind of from the inside looking out, meaning that even if you think, oh, I'm, I'm too small, I don't really have a quote unquote brand. I'm not that, I'm a solo entrepreneur. But I always say it's kind of like, well, no matter what you do, the consumer is looking you, at you from a perspective and, and kind of making some perhaps um, decisions about what they think your quote unquote brand is. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. This is how we make decisions as consumers, clients, mm -hmm. customers, is we are either drawn towards or pushed away from mm -hmm. a voice, a vibe, a feeling, uh, the words that you choose, the con again, your content is your marketing, right? And that all starts with brand. So this is how, this is how we connect. You know, I, I use an example often about the $1 cup of coffee at the convenience store versus the $5 cup of coffee at Starbucks. They're both coffee. It's not a dollar anymore, by the way. I was at 7-Eleven. It's now $2. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> post, because post of course. Post-pandemic, post-pandemic, we're now up to two. Well, you know, Joy, the espresso maker here at the Passion Squared Treehouse, um, you know, she stays busy making my Americano. So <laughs> I don't purchase coffee at convenience stores. However, you get it. So yes. not only does that speak to brand, the entire experience that something's built around, what it also speaks to is brand value, right? Mm -hmm. And and <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast, but mm -hmm. It, it it's yeah it's the brand right one one is just a product or service and the other is actually a brand so it's it's a simple process but it is not easy and i think that's why so many folks kind of shy away from it it wasn't taught in beauty school most people aren't marketers by nature or haven't had mar real fundamental marketing education which of course i have because that was my life mm -hmm. um, you know for a very long time pre passion squared and I, let me let me stop there and say you know cuz yeah. I, I do want to say for the audience for context that you've got a 25 year plus kind of corporate side yeah. of, of your life we don't want to dig into it but i want to no. just say <laughs> I, we don't. Again, for context, you have some sure. very deep, deep experience and learnings, you know, that that have informed everything that you talk about today that come from the, the bigger world of beauty. 
I do. And and that's the frameworks that we use here at Passion Squared in coaching our clients. It's very similar frameworks to what I use to build uh, <laughs> products, programs, promotions, everything, you know. For one of the um, biggest brands in beauty. Oh, yeah. And build brand. Yes. Yep. All yep. of that. All of that. So when, of course, started Passion Squared and when we launched our first uh, how to create an awesome brand digital course in 2013, this was the framework that I designed based on how, you know, how I did things in my old life. Right. Um, so brand purpose, what problem are you solving? I mean, that's like a fundamental, right? We, we, we're all solving a problem. And if we can't identify the problem we're solving, then we're going to kind of flounder a lot and get pulled and drawn by different tips, tricks, advice, because we have no foundation. We have no GPS. We have no compass for the decisions that we make in literally every part of our business, right? So brand purpose, what problem are you solving? Brand promise is how are you solving it? How are you solving it? How do you want your folks to feel? This is such a bit, it could be a consultation process. It could be the entire experience. It could be how you want your folks to feel and whether your folks in this case being your clients or if you're an employer, your team, or if you are a lease-based salon, your tenants, because, you know, you have different promises for, for different stakeholders, depending on, you know, the, the, who you're, who you're talking to. So that moves us to brand people, right? Those are the folks who have the problems that you have the solutions to. Um, Those are the folks that see value in the solutions that you offer. Those are the folks that have shared vision visions and values. And those are the folks you desire to serve. So that's really important because I, what I see a lot in the salon industry is, is hairdressers talking to each other as opposed to talking to their people. And by people, I can't determine what that is for you, but it's either your clients, your team or your tenants. Right. So, and that really dictates everything. It's also, it's also a big part of where we see this discourse in, 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 and this kind of resentment of, if you don't want to pay my price, you know, screw you. And if you don't see my value, it's like, yeah, you're talking to the wrong people. Not everyone's going to see your value, right? So your people share not only your vision and values as a brand, they see value in your solutions. Again, different podcasts in terms of brand value and pricing, but it is all tied together. And that's why brand is the first step. It's the foundation. And then the last part is brand products and services, right? What solutions, products and services, solutions do you offer to solve the problems for your people? And that's our framework. (laughs) All right. So let's go back to something really important that you brought up that it's kind of a a sidestep from maybe the core conversation, but you know, this kind of idea of of how we show up, you know, whether it's for our clients, for our tenants, you know, for our team, but also how we show up publicly and I'll, we'll say social media because you you brought up such a, a big thing that I think is happening in our world that kind of, I don't know, this pandemic supercharged it. And that's these conversations that we have perhaps we think with each other professionally, but they're happening mm-hmm. out in public, out, very, out, very out in public. And so to me, we're often showing up for a conversation we think we're having with one group of people, but we're having it in a more kind of bigger way, meaning anybody and everybody who decides to tune into us can hear it. And to me, those conversations often seem to disconnect with what I view as some of those very same people's quote unquote brand. And and that goes back to your content is your marketing. And and of course we get these questions all the time. If if you are serving one more than one audience, then you have to, it's delicate, right? You have to decide how you're going to do that and the context in which you're going to present those things, because it can be, um, it can be difficult to serve two audiences, not impossible, but difficult. And particularly in, in this day and age where enragement engagement and clickbait seem to be like the thing that it seems mm-hmm. to work, the algorithm yep. loves it. Right. Yep. And so these kind of uh, exaggerated, um, highly emotional, you know, emotionally charged pieces of content that mm-hmm. are talking about topics that are very much not suitable, relevant of value or helpful to building long-term client relationships. Yeah. It's, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely a problem. And, 
and the client is left out of so much of this, which as a client, you know, I, I'm not just a marketer. Um, I'm a client, you know, and yep, um, yep. it as feels it, it feels it, it from a fundamentally from a business perspective and in a brand development and strategy perspective. It's not something I recommend to our clients at Passion Squared and they know that. Uh, but as a client, it makes me feel like shit. Which, you know, and some have solved this, <laughs> this, 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 this issue by having private Facebook groups as an example, right? I mean, I know that mm-hmm. you have that with, with, yes. with a school and, and I know that also, you know, big brands often will have, you know, these, these groups that are specific to hair colorists as an example, and they're vetting the people coming in. So they, they know that they're, you know, having pros speaking with pros and brands who want to have a pro conversation, having it in these silos that are kind of walled off from the public. Versus perhaps a, 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 a beauty brand's presence on social platforms that is very specifically meant for the consumer. And so so they're creating a, a way, a mechanism, if you will, you know, by way of these platforms to to hopefully, you know, speak in silos that make sense and don't make this messy to the point of what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, 100 percent. And then there's there, there's another part of this, which is about, bound, you know, healthy boundaries. And mm-hmm. again, yeah. another misunderstood concept. Uh, in in the world, really, not just our industry, but we have a healthy boundary framework that we talk about in uh, the book that I wrote in 2019, my awesome as fuck healthy boundary handbook. And it, it's just five questions. Why am I posting this? What is my intention? How does this post add value? Am I posting this to seek attention? And is this post targeted at an individual? Uh, and again, different podcasts, but it 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 really is very much about staying very clear with your brands, the outcome you're seeking online, uh, who you know again, who you're serving, the value that you're adding, the problems that you're solving, and just go, getting back to center and and bringing those healthy boundaries with you. Uh, I truly believe, and why we do this work at Passion Squared is with with healthier boundaries, we would take a conversation private we would not choose to put to client shame, (laughs) you know, one of the biggest, biggest boundary violations in the salon industry is client shaming and stylist shaming, by the way, shaming in general. And if we portray, if we portray ourselves as a, as a group of people, or as a, even a solo entrepreneur, solo entrepreneur, whatever that is, um, who is compassionate towards my people I, I work with and and for and, and provide services to. And if I and if I also maybe connect to that as an example that that I'm concerned about the environment and, and the world as part of that's one of my passions. Let's let's talk about how that can go sideways. You know, so again, whether I'm, you know, a small business or a larger business, you know, A is how I, you know, create my environment. You know, B is how I I present my environment to the larger world on social. C is I'll use the example of even the restroom because sometimes I go into salons that are I've got all this passion about things and I go in the restroom and I see all kinds of stuff I'm like well that's not very eco friendly and but but give a little bit of talk about that like let's let's give an example of how we're disconnected perhaps sometimes and how we show up for sure so alignment is key right and we want to align our online experience with our offline and our offline experience with our online. So uh, an example, I mean, an an example, you, you kind of started it is, you know, we can say that when you enter our space, you will feel cared for, loved and seen and heard. One of the biggest problems, as we all know, is clients leave salons because they felt no one was listening to them. Right. That's listening's a, a big issue. So um, in in the brand promise, part of that, how is is the proprietary consultation process, whatever, all those things. So we are going to be seen her cared for whatever yet you are online client shaming or you know like that type of stuff that's inconsistent right or i walk into the salon and nobody even says hello or there's no consultation just something as simple as that it was like wait i thought you were the listening brand like where where's that where <laughs> where where does that promise come in right and and trust is built on promises kept right so one of the biggest struggles is we can write i mean we can write this fancy thing on a website this mission statement or whatever it's all bullshit because it it has to this is your whole experience right so 
whatever promises you're making, you you really need to work hard to keep those. And and one of the struggles that salons have in keeping those is over committing, right? Um, you know, people pleasing, codependency, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, I just don't have time. And I'm like, well, then don't make that promise, right? Make that promise and create a system to deliver on that promise consistently or don't make that promise. Uh, so le- less is more, right? Quality over quantity, you know, all of those, all of those things. It's really, it, it, it is, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy, but it's very simple. And, and again, big ideas that to really, truly understand a, a topic as complex as as brand. And, and, and again, as you say, you know, different, you know, branding um, is is take some work, you know, take some some education. And, and right. I know with a school and, and with a lot of the work that you're doing, yes. you know, there's, there's opportunities for folks to, yeah. to get access to that information today, you know, as a, as a quick conversation to introduce people to some of these really important ideas and give us a little bit of that clarity and, and where you would want to send people to get more from you specifically. Well, our promise at Passion Squared and A Schools, we help you make more aligned decisions a lot because that's what you do all day. You make Mm -hmm. decisions, right? And it's stressful. It's overwhelming or you don't make decisions, which is a decision which can have, you know, not be a good, not good in the long run. So we help you make more aligned decisions. And a big part of this is having clarity of brand, healthy boundaries, you know, clarity of vision and values. So you can find us online. You can find us at passionsquared.net, at Passion Squared on the socials. And, you know, it's just, it's all I do every single day. And I've said this since 2012 and I get to wake up every day and use my experience, tools and wisdom to empower the people that I love. And it's the, uh, it's the greatest honor of a lifetime. So yeah, that's what we do. That's who we are. And you have great clarity around what you do. You're really passionate about having that clarity. You mentioned less is more. And I love that because that is one of my mantras, you know, going forward in the new year and social beauty makers is all about less is more and small is a new big. And But, but again, doing kind of big and, and profound and, and, and kind of over the top ways that that fit into into your brand so so thank you to my one of my dearest friends on the entire planet Nita Coker, for being my guest today and and thank you to the audience for listening follow passion squared on ig um on facebook and on tiktok because i know you've got a lot of passion right now around tiktok visit passionsquared.net for more info about everything that nina has to offer and and lastly i want to say to my audience uh, for the podcast, I appreciate you guys so much. Like, subscribe, share, better yet, leave a review. Um, visit us over at socialbeautymakers.com to sign up for our free newsletter and to get access to more content. And uh, that's it. We're done for the day, Nina. Um, thank you to everybody. I'm Gordon Miller. I'm most excited to bring you more good stuff next time. Next time.